Uh, good evening. <clears throat> Welcome to the Historic Preservation Commission meeting um, today, uh, December 9th, 2021. Um, my name is Joan Keston. I'm, I'm the acting chairman of the HPC. Um, hearings before the Historic Preservation Commission are quasi-judicial in nature. This is a design review process to determine if the proposed project is congruous with the special character of the historic district or landmark. Decisions of the Commission are based on the record of these proceedings, the Wilmington Design Standards for Historic Districts and Landmarks, and the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation. Evidence submitted to the Commission for review becomes part of the record. Appeals of Commission decisions are to the Wilmington Board of Adjustment and then to Superior Court and are based on the record. Appeals must be filed within 30 days of the date of the Commission's action. Evidence is received during the evidentiary hearing portion of an agenda item. Those who want to address the Commission are sworn as witnesses to present material and substantial evidence to the Commission. The Chair recognizes those who want to submit such evidence during the evidentiary hearing. Evidence should be directed to the Commission. To ensure that evidence is properly recorded, please come to the podium. To address the Commission, state your name and address and speak clearly. A brief reminder that members of the HPC are appointed by and serve at the pleasure of the City Council. Our charge is with respect to the protection and preservation of properties in the city's designed district district, historic district. <clears throat> we are held to the standards of the Wilmington Design Standards for Historic Districts and Landmarks and per applicable North Carolina state law to determine if exterior changes are congruous with the special character of the city's historic districts. It is important that we deliberate the merits of each request in a manner that provides a record as the basis for our decisions. Please remember that our deliberation should be centered on how a project meets the design standards and whether the proposed change is congruous or is not congruous. Commissioners, if you have received or have been aware of any outside evidence related to any other matters, please recuse yourself. At this time, I would like to request that all cell phones be either turned off or put on silent mode. Thank you. Um, I would like to introduce uh, the commission, please, Christopher. Christopher Yermel. Stephen Sulky. <clears throat> Kathleen Egan. Wilson. Michael Smith. Ashley Wilson. Um, and also present are Amy Freitag, the preservation planner, Melissa Huffman, assistant city attorney, Christine Hughes, the senior planner, and Amy Bradshaw, the planning coordinator. Um, anyone who wishes to speak tonight, please stand and be sworn in. If all applicants or anyone who wishes to speak could please stand up and raise your right hand. Are you going to speak, sir? No? Okay. If you're not sworn in, you'll then have to be and choose to speak later. You'll have to be sworn in at that time. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, um, first item uh, is to approve the minutes of the November 18th meeting. Does anybody um, have any comments or edits? Um, Madam Chair, I wonder if we could do that after we've heard the new business, the COA. I have some um, comments and discussion about um, something, and I, I, particularly as related to our vote, and I'd like to have that uh, not take the time up of the applicants, if we could do that at the end of our COA hearing. Melissa? Okay. <clears throat> Okay, we'll proceed to the first item of new business. <clears throat> I'm gonna recuse myself from this item. The Warshard du du Duplex was built circa 1914 and is a contributing resource to the historic district. The property is located at 323 South 6th Street and is within the Historic District Residential. In this district, alterations to all facades of a building and site are subject to design review, regardless of if they can be seen from the public right-of-way. The application before you today is a request to replace a section of fence located on a corner lot. Here's an aerial of the property showing the section of fence proposed for replacement located on the southeast corner of the property. Here's a view of the property looking northeast showing that same section of fence on the rear of the property. The fence section to be replaced would not exceed 12 feet in length 
the existing wood fence would be replaced in kind with a new wood fence matching the current design, but at a height of five feet tall, as opposed to the existing three feet, six inches tall fence. The eastern section of fence would raise up to meet the existing central fence height that separates the subject property from the adjacent property. The design standards state that fences and garden walls have traditionally been used to delineate property lines and mark boundaries between public and private property. Fences of wood, brick, masonry, and wrought iron are found within the local districts. Fences shall be constructed at a height no greater than four feet in front yards to the front corner of the house and six feet in the rear yard from the back corner of the house. With that, we'd like to enter the staff report into the record for tonight's proceedings. Thank you, Ivy. Does anybody have any questions for staff? Thank you. Uh, would the applicant like to, to speak? <clears throat> I'm supposed to come up. I'm Please. Tom Morshauer. I live in Charlotte. This is a house my grandfather actually built many years ago. Um, <laughs> we just want to raise up the fence in the back because um, we keep our garbage cans in the rear of the property, and it's right adjacent to the front door of the neighbor's house. And if we were able to raise it a couple of feet, the garbage cans would be less visible to people, to pedestrians, and also to people, particularly people visiting that house. And so that's the whole point behind this. Any Thank questions you. for the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, at this point, we'll open up the evidentiary uh, portion of the meeting. If anybody wishes to present any evidence, please come forward. None. We'll, we'll close the evidentiary portion of the meeting. Uh, staff del uh, deliberations of the commission. Anyone have any comments? I've got no problems with this. It's, I know this seems pretty straightforward. And anybody? <clears throat> I turned this on. Um, I move to approve with conditions the request for <coughs> fence replacement on a corner lot at 323 South 6th Street and to adopt the proposed findings of fact. Details as shown in the drawings, plans, photographs, submittals, and narrative statement contained in the application and supplemental materials and statements made at this meeting are part of the request unless otherwise noted. This motion is based on the evidence presented before us, the application submittals, testimony, staff report, including the findings of fact. The following conditions shall be applied to ensure compliance with the design standards, those set forth in the staff report one through six. The proposed request with conditions complies with the Wilmington design standards for historic districts and landmarks. It is compatible with the materials, features, design, context, and character of the historic building and the historic district in which it's located. It is congruous with the site, streetscape, and historic aspects of the historic district residential as a whole. Appli applicable design standards are 1.6, Secretary of the Interior Standards, Standards 2 and 9, 2.3, Fences and Walls, Standards 1 through 6, 8, and 9. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item number two. For the record, I live across the street from this item, but there's no reason for me to recuse myself. So. The Hyde Clark House was built circa 1857 and is a contributing resource to the historic district. The property is located at 621 Dock Street and is within the Historic District Residential. In this district, alterations to all facades of a building and site are subject to design review regardless of whether they can be seen from the public right of way. The application before you today is a request to replace the existing picket fence along the front, east, and a portion of the north property line. Here's an aerial up showing the existing fence line proposed for replacement. The new fence would follow the same linear pattern as the existing fence spanning the front of the property along Dock Street, along the east off South 7th Street, and along a portion of the north property line on the corner lot only. You can see here how the existing fence wraps around the property on the eastern portion of the lots. 
And here you can see the fence reaching around the corner of the lot and extending back towards the rear and then turning again towards the interior of the lot ever so slightly. The existing wood picket fence is three feet, six inches tall with pointed tops and one by three pickets. The replacement fence would be in kind, a new wood picket fence to match the existing in material, design, and location. The applicant proposes to modify the fence height from three feet, six inches tall to an even four feet tall. The design standards state that fences and garden walls have traditionally been used to delineate property lines and mark boundaries between public and private property. Fences of wood, brick, masonry, and wrought iron are found within the local districts. Fences shall be constructed at a height no greater than four feet in front yards to the front corner of the house and six feet in the rear yard from the back corner of the house. With that, we'd like to enter the staff report into the record for tonight's proceedings. Any questions for staff? No. Thank you, Ivy. Um, at this point, we'll open the, oh, I'm sorry, if the applicant would like to come forward and, and address this. We've got the whole family here tonight, huh? <laughs> they were curious what was going to happen tonight, so I told them they could come. <laughs> we just want to replace the fence after we've done the renovation. Just state your name and address oh, first, please. sorry. Nicole Hampton, 621 Dock Street. Just want to replace the fence so that it's in better repair. Any questions for applicant? Thank you. Okay. We're all set. We get to go back and sit. <laughs> Uh, we'll open the evidentiary portion of the meeting. Would anyone like to come forward and speak for this item? <clears throat> uh, we'll close the evidentiary portion of the meeting. Any deliberations by the commission? Any comments? That's fine. Motion? Um, I move to approve with condition the, the request for fence, re boy, fence replacement on the corner lot of 621 Dock Street and to adopt the proposed findings of facts. Details are shown on the drawings, plans, photographs, submittals, and narrative statements contained in the application and the submittal materials. And statements made at this meeting are a part of the request unless otherwise noted. This motion is based on the evidence presented before us, the uh, application, submittals, testimony, staff reports, including the findings of fact. The following conditions shall apply to ensure compliance with the design standards, those set forth in the staff reports one through five. The proposed request with conditions does comply with the Wilmington design standards for the historic districts and landmarks, is compatible with materials, features, design, context, and character of the historic buildings in the historic district in which it is located, and is congruous with the site, streetscape, and historic aspects of the historic district residential as a whole. Applicable design standards, 1.6, Secretary of the Interior standards, standards 2 and 9, 2.3, Fences and Walls standards 1 to 6 and 9. A second, anyone? A second. second. <clears throat> Aye. Opposed? Passage unanimously. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> item number three. The house was built circa 1830 and is a contributing resource to the historic district. However, the house was moved to this location around 1940, so there's an outstanding question on whether it would still be considered a contributing resource given the move and recent exterior alterations. The property is located at 507 Ann Street and is within the historic district residential. In this district, alterations to all facades of a building and site are subject to design review, regardless of whether they can be seen from the public right of way. The application before you today is to remove the brick chimney on the rear of the main body of the house. Here's, an, excuse me, here's a close up of the chimney looking at it from Ann Street. And here's an aerial view of the property showing the location of the chimney on the rear of the main body of the house. Here's a photo from 1982 showing the subject chimney as well as a former chimney located centrally on the house roof. The HPC approved the removal of the central chimney back in 2018. The chimney proposed for removal is brick and measures approximately 12 foot tall of the portion that's outside of the house. 
The applicant states the chimney is not structurally sound and is causing interior water damage to the home. An engineer has looked at the chimney, but unfortunately the report was not available at the time of the application submittal. I believe the applicant does have a copy of the report here tonight with the results of the inspection. The design standards state that chimneys, dormers, turrets, cresting, cupolas, belvederes, finials, and other features reflect the style and character of a building and should be retained. With that, I'd like to enter the staff report into the record for tonight's proceedings. <coughs> Thank you. Any questions for Ivy, for staff? Thank you, Ivy. Would the applicant like to come forward? Please state your name and address. Hi, I'm Shaley Botuk um, and 507 Ann Street. I purchased this property about a month ago and there are, the previous owner has done several um, pretty much dangerous and illegal repairs inside and outside of the home, which I am trying to address one by one. The chimney being one of them in that it is structurally unsound. I do have the structural engineer's report, which does recommend removal. Um, and I, I would be happy to answer any questions. I, I am very sad to be removing such a structural part of the home, but I'm not sure there's really a way to reinforce it, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, here. Yeah, can that report be put in the record? Yes. And I made three copies if you wanted to pass it down. Thank you. Does, um, I, Avi showed us a picture of the principal chimney internal Did, was this a flue chimney or a, a is it a, tied it's not to a, a working fireplace? chimney it's not a fireplace it's okay. just a i i believe a flue ch chimney just has the holes in it right okay yeah. and i think i i did include an internal picture in my application but not sure if that's been included it would be in the packet that they received okay. prior to the meeting so there should be an internal picture Any questions for the applicant? Or any <clears throat> questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll open the evidentiary portion. Does anyone wish to come forward and speak? Yeah. We'll close the evidentiary portion of this meeting. Uh, commission, any comments? <clears throat> I wanted to point out this does look to be a, a more contemporary chimney. <clears throat> Looking at some of the photos close up, and, um, you know, if this were any other, I think if this were any other uh, classic chimney that was antique and had been there for a very, very long time, um, I don't think we'd want to take into consideration the fact that there's no cricket and how the leaks are coming in. You know, that's just kind of a, a, a practice of renovation and, and new construction in the first place to get that thing flashed properly. But point being, I think because it's a contemporary chimney and... Um, doesn't, doesn't serve a use, and, and I don't know if it ever served much of a use, except for maybe a little oil boiler or something like that, or an oil heater that <clears throat> it appears to me that it can come down. Anything else? Motion? Move to approve with conditions the request to waive the 365-day demolition for the rear chimney and removal of the rear chimney at 507 Ann Street and to adopt the proposed findings of fact. Details as shown on the drawings, plans, photographs, submittals, and narrative statement contained in the application and supplemental materials and statements made at this meeting are part of the request unless otherwise noted. This motion is based on the evidence presented before us, the application submittals, testimony, staff report, including the findings of fact. The following conditions shall be applied to ensure compliance with the design standards, those set forth in Staff Report 1 through 3. The proposed request with conditions complies with the Wilmington Design Standards for Historic District and Landmarks. It is compatible with the materials, features, design, context, and character of the historic building and the historic district in which it is located. And it is congruous with the site, streetscape, and historic aspects of the historic district residential as a whole. 
Applicable Design Standards, 1.6 Secretary of the Interior Standards, Standards 2 and 9, 3.1 Roof Standards 2, and 3.3 Masonry Stone Standard 1. Second, anyone? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, passage unanimously. Thank you. Item uh, number four. The Cromwell House was built circa 1904 and is a non-contributing resource to the historic district. The property is located at 710 Gray Street and is within the historic district residential. In this district, alterations to all facades of a building and site are subject to design review, regardless of whether they can be seen from the public right-of-way. The application before you today is for after-the-fact work on the exterior of the house as well as the site. The department did receive a complaint about possible work without a COA. Upon confirmation of work being completed, a stop work order was issued on October 18th. At a meeting with the applicant, staff worked to list out the after the fact work items that have been completed to date. The work included the removal of vinyl siding to expose underlying wood siding, installation of metal wood metal window awnings over two windows on the front elevation and installation of new vinyl windows. However, the applicant is seeking approval for custom wood replacement windows as noted in the application submittal. There was the installation of aluminum light fixture west of the front door. The installation of a Tamco Heritage Series asphalt shingle roof and removal of a board-on-board -board wood fence with two, gate, two gates on either side of the house and a pro proposed replacement fence in kind. <coughs> Installation of an aluminum light fixture above the rear doors and replacement of a former rear deck, the applicant states was in disrepair. Unfortunately, images of the house prior to, the year, to this year are almost non-existent. Staff relied heavily on information from the applicant to determine the scope of work that had been completed. However, while we were drafting the report, uh, staff began looking at images of the house available on Google Street View and was able to determine several other features that had been modified or removed. It was d difficult to determine when some of the items may have been altered, but some items to do appear to have been modified within the past year. Uh, based on the Google Street View images, staff was able to determine that a brick chimney had been removed, plus shutters on all front facade windows and the first window on either side of the house. There is a new front door and a wood had handicapped ramp was removed on the western side of the house. Here is a 2019 street view showing where there was a chimney, uh, shutters on the windows, a storm door that's no longer there, a different entry door, metal handrails removed from the front entry steps, some landscaping was removed, and the wood handicapped ramp on the western side of the house was also removed. So this is an aerial of the property from 2021. It's most likely that this aerial image was taken in early 2021, just because they typically take those shots when there's less foliage on the trees so that you can get better views of the property. Um, this aerial shows an accessory building located in the rear yard. At some point, the building was removed. The applicant did not mention an accessory building, but did say that they had replaced the dilapidated rear deck. Um, unfortunately, based on the aerial, it doesn't appear that a deck had previously existed. Uh, based on so, uh, those same images, we were able to determine that a new HVAC unit was likely installed along with new, two new concrete pads. Um, what's more curious is the rear French doors that are now in place on the rear elevation. Uh, Google Earth 3D imagery appears to show a window in this location. 
And here is an image from Google Earth from November 2019 showing what appears to be a window on the rear elevation and the same general location as the new French doors that are currently in place. I mentioned that there's not many historic photographs available for this property, but here is one from our records from 1999. And to help visualize some of the alterations that have occurred, here's a collection of photographs side by side from 1999, 2007, 2019, and 2021. There's no record of any certificate of appropriatenesses being issued for this property at any time. We don't have any in our files whatsoever for the property. Um, the applicant purchased the property in July of this year, so it's worth noting that many of the alterations likely may have occurred between April 2019 and November 2021, just based on the images we have available. That's about as best that we could narrow down the window in which some of these alterations could have taken place. Uh, the modifications made to the house and property m does mean that it is now out of compliance and we ask the commission to address these items to help bring it back into compliance with no outstanding items on the, on the record. So with that, I'd like to enter the staff report into the record for tonight's proceedings. Thank you, Ivy. Any questions for staff? I have a question on the 2021 or the current image. It, am I seeing that in the shadow? Is that roof? what was the port, porch roof is now tied in with the pitch of the house as opposed to separated and all the other three? It does look like the end of the roof may have been modified. Um, yes, you are correct. I do believe it was. It does look that way. It's hard to tell, Ivy, on the, the dark blue, um, I guess, shingles above the two windows there. What is that material? It's black or blue on the on the 2021. Above the two windows on yeah, the left right, hand side, yeah. what, those what are it, metal awnings. But then, what is the material above the wood? I think it's some flashing. Looks like it's winking. I mean, the awnings look like they're eyeglass, just the winking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm more referring side. to the black triangular shape up there where the oh, pitch so. of the roof is, the actual, the wood shingles of some sort maybe? Or oh, wood. and the gable, the right. top portion mm -hmm. of the gable. Yes, those are shingles. Um, yeah. We did, I believe I saw a description that did note um, shingles in that location. It may be in the project description now that I think about it in the report. I don't think we had a photograph mm -hmm. of it, but um, the applicant stated that that was existing when they removed the vinyl siding, then okay. they exposed that in place. Doesn't look like the same Thank house you. at all. I oh, know, it's been yeah. really destroyed. And, um, you, I appreciate you narrowing down when the, you, you think the work occurred. There was never any report and never any, I know we've gone to a new system with the code picking up on this, but all this work occurred and, and it's finished and it was never identified? As far as we know, we do not have any record of a COA application being submitted for this property. We did pull the, the paper file and look through it to see oh, if I, we could I appreciate find, that. I, yeah. I mean, just someone riding around looking for work, you know, uh, which is what code does now, I think, but, you know, that... Um, you know, that much work can occur and not uh, go unnoticed, I guess. Uh, well, we did receive a complaint, which did initiate an investigation uh, to the site, which kind of brought, up, brought about some of these other outstanding items that we then found. Okay, thank you. Because it was a decent level of work being done on the property, so I think someone okay. did notice that. Any other questions for Ivy? Thank you, Ivy. Well, Ivy, thank you for the research on that too, for going to Google Earth and helping to find that evidence too. I think that, thank you for doing that. Oh, absolutely. Um, all of our staff members really put some time into this to try and make sure that mm -hmm. we were identifying the outstanding items and trying to be thorough. We don't want to necessarily. It, it <coughs> Excuse me, it appears that um, 
from your research that pretty much the entire house has been modified. I mean, the front and the back and windows removed and, okay, all right, thank you. And uh, if you could touch uh, once more on the, you said it um, just prior that, that applicants prepared to put wood windows in. Um, is that th house wide or just on the front or what's, what's that? Uh, no, sir. All the windows on the house were replaced. Um, but upon meeting with the applicant, we were talking about what would be more appropriate windows for this house. And, and that's when they worked to submit additional information on new custom wood windows. Gotcha. Um, I think the reason that in the application there's only information on those is because of the lag time in terms of right. orders and getting those windows. Right. Right. It looks like it may be trick of the eye, but it looks like the windows, when you're facing it to the right, um, that they, they're they smaller? Um, I think that on the 2021 image, that may have been my fault. I was trying to get the image to line up. Okay. So it, it does look a little bit more narrow uh, now. And again, we just questions keep evolving. The, what was now the enclosed porch is six over one, but to the left, the, the full face of the facade on the street side, it looks in the early look like it's two over one. Is, have you been able to determine what the windows were? I think from the photos, I mean, we only have some from the front, but it looks like most of the windows may have been two over one. The porch was enclosed at a later date. I'm not sure what date it was. It's actually in the National Register nomination that it was enclosed, so going back to the 90s. Um, but yes, for the addition, they're just six over one. I have a question on the chimney. Is there anything left under, I mean, is, was the chimney just removed from the roof or the entire thing taken down totally, gone? Uh, unfortunately, we weren't aware of the chimney until we started doing the report and we found from these images that had been removed. So oh, okay. um, I'm, I'm not sure if anything is remaining from that chimney. Right. So we don't know if it was a fireplace in there or whatever they did, okay. I don't know, right. yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Ivy. <clears throat> Would the applicant like to come forward? Sure. State your name and address, please. Willie Bowden, uh, 710 Gray Street. Um, apologize for my ignorance regarding how this whole process works. Uh, we look forward to making it right and working with y'all on future projects. Hi, my name is uh, Michael Murphy. I'm an investor on the same property, and um, I also did a lot of the renovation, and I'd like to take the opportunity to clear up some of the uh, questions about 710 Gray Street. I apologize first if we, we by no means tried to circumvent the authority of this committee. Um, we were happy to find that after purchasing the property, that under the house had been completely encapsulated in the vinyl. And I had a hunch that you know, the original uh, siding was there. And when we took parts of the vinyl off, we did discover that it was there. There were several pieces that needed to be uh, replaced, but a very small amount that we did replace with the like wood. The section that you were talking about above the two windows with the awning, that's actually not shingles, it is shakes. And they were the original shakes. Literally did not have to even be touched up, just a little bit of caulking. And they were, we were delighted to find that they were still there. With the question of the, the, the roof line up front, that uh, the picture, as pictured in 2019, there was a separation above there, but it had leaked so badly that the front porch of that house was starting to pull away from the house. So we just made the modification of tying it in, strengthening it up, and having a clear line for the water to come down and leave the top of the roof. Now, as far as the chimney, well, let me 
step back just a second. When we took over, uh, assumed ownership of the property, this place was completely gutted. It was a shell and it had, um, there were people squatting. There was somebody living underneath the floorboards. It was completely ripped away. The um, chimney that in discussion on the left was listing just there were a few, uh, uh, the brick on top was listing towards the house to the left, which is only about a, a seven foot distance from there. And the brick, everything that had any kind of value on the inside was completely ripped away. There was no mantle, there was no brick inside. There were, pardon me, there were several bricks on the floor, but there was, it was beyond repair. Was it a fireplace chimney? It was a fireplace chimney. So what we saw was the shell of um, the, uh, the mantle and then the, uh, the flue had been cracked in half or cut in half, pulled through. And it was, I howled by the grace of God, it was holding on and didn't fall onto the neighbor's house. So what we did was we tied it off and then brick by brick just took it down because we were terrified that we were going to ruin the neighbor's house. Um, as far as the windows, all the windows when we took over the property, they were, um, they were actually more indicative of uh, the 19 photo. They were uh, six panel vinyl windows. And they, most of them were cracked, broken out, and there were two on the side that were boarded up. Um, so that's where we screwed up. Pa pardon my French. I'm sorry. That's where we messed up because we weren't, we thought that if we just replaced them with new vinyl windows, since there were vinyl windows already in there, that we, we would be in compliance. But like my partner said, we, this was our first time doing a reno in the historic district and, uh, mm -hmm. We, again, apologize if we'd have known, we would have definitely asked for permission for that. In regards to the, um, the, uh, the ramp that was on the right side of the house, the ramp that was on the right side of the house was torn apart away from the house. There was tons of debris throughout the yard. The building that was in the back, back there was just, completely, it was just a, almost like a dump. The deck, yes, um, was back there, but it was not as big as the one we put back there. So we just decided to strengthen it up and give them a little bit more room coming out of that back uh, door. And I know that um, Ivy had pointed out that she thought it was a window that could, but that's not correct. And I'm, I'm not trying to argue, but it was in fact a door right there that led out of the back part of the property. We widened it and put in a French door. I have a question about the shake you said when you removed the vinyl. Sure. Did you paint it that dark color? Uh, so when we took the vinyl off, it, um, it was a, you could tell that it was a navy color. We, we actually took chips of it and took it to our paint distributor and because I couldn't tell if it was black or navy or what have you. And he said the best match that he came up with was Navy. Was the whole house at that point, at some point, Navy? Or no, ma'am. It was, always it, it was white. Yeah, the house was white, and then the trim was uh, Navy, and the uh, shakes were Navy. But we did not alter those shakes one bit. We were delighted to find that they were all intact. Uh, well, that we caught them. And I'm just a little curious in the process here. How did you purchase this property? A foreclosure? Did you have a realtor involved? We had a realtor. Uh -huh. And the realtor did not say anything? It's take actually from a wholesaler. A wholesaler, sorry. Oh, so it wasn't a local was, real estate firm? or It was off-market deal, uh, like a cash purchase. Okay. Right. right. It never actually hit the market, if you will. Okay. Right. Thank you. And uh, you say that all the windows were vinyl? Yes, sir. That they were all vinyl, but they were uh, six panel. They had, it kind of, they tried to make them... They were the, uh, the matter of fact, some of the stickers were actually still on the windows from whoever it was that had replaced them. 
that's yeah. why we felt like we could just replace them with new vinyl windows that were high efficiency. And were the vinyl were the storm windows? Pardon? Were there storm windows over the vinyl windows? Yes, sir. But we got stopped before we were able to finish. There are several no, items. No, no. I'm looking at the two, 2007. It looks like, you know, a, a storm window could be up uh, over the existing window. I'm just. Oh well, no, sir. When, not to my knowledge. No, there was just vinyl windows. Yes, no sir. Storm windows. Correct. <clears throat> Were the vinyl windows replacement windows or were they new windows with a flange that you found when you saw this? No, so the vinyl windows that we put in. Not, not what you put in, what, what, what were there? Were they replacement windows without a flange or were yes, they? Sir. Yes, they sir. Yes, They were just replacement yeah, windows. They were in the original uh, so window. So someone had removed a, probably an older window and stuck these in. Yes, sir, that That's is exactly what happened. All right. Yeah. So why, why did you, why did you take those vinyl windows out and put in new Vinyl they, they were all trash. They were broken. Um, every single one of them either had a crack clean through of it. Some of them were blown out, and they just were they were leaking everywhere. This place was inundated with water intrusion, whether it be from the sea, the, the roof, the windows, the side, everything. The floors were, you know, completely buckled, if you will. Yeah, do you have a, did you uh, pull a building permit for this project? Yes, sir. Okay. And we've since passed every single inspection. What was the scope for the building permit? I saw, I, I looked it up just now and I saw you pulled one in July. We did. July. Um, so what we wanted to do was. Um, for $8,000, I think. <clears throat> yes. We wanted to just um, create space a for a bathroom. It was a 3-1 and it was a, th it, so it became a 3-2. And the rooms, as you may know, are just were kind of quirky sizes. So what we did was we were able to just move one wall over to create the space in order to proper, have a bathroom put right in there. So putting in a five or a six foot wide door when there may have been a window or a door there previous, that wasn't part of the inspection, the, the new header over that French door that's installed now? I'm sorry, what was that again? The, the permit you had. Uh -huh. Uh, didn't didn't cover looking at the new header because you 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 say that there was a door there door or a window whatever it was Correct. but but the you you widened the opening we to, did to put and in that, this new five or six foot wide door and but that's that wasn't part of the inspection then no that was part of the final inspection yes sir oh it was okay yeah and you're and you're certifying that there was indeed a I'm just curious I'm trying to parse the story but you said there there was certainly you testify that there was a, a deck there at the back originally when you yes, bought sir. it but it's not not the same size I, I our deck is definitely bigger and sturdier than the existing deck back there what we did was we reverse engineered kind of what was back there and we realized that it wouldn't really work for especially with the addition of the uh, HVAC unit because it had to go right there. I think, I think what the commission might want to lean toward, m me in particular, is to try to consider what would we have done, what would we have approved, what would any commission have approved if you were to try to do some of these d d designs from the beginning, <clears throat> you know, per the design of the deck, per the windows, per the awnings over the those front windows and, and a handful of things. <clears throat> so I think that's just something we'll deliberate on ourselves and, and maybe have other questions for you in a, in a minute. Absolutely, There's, we will do whatever it takes to come compliant and whatever you know satisfies you guys. To be honest with you, we thought we were kind of bringing this thing back to its old glory. Um, but you know, I understand we, we, when we did get the stop order, we were not able to put the, um, the handrails there. And there was actually only one handrail existing, and that was the one on the right side, or the uh, storm door. And basically, we were right at the point where we were gonna do that, paint the, uh, the base of the uh, house around the back, and paint the house on the, I'm sorry, the back portion of the house. So I didn't, I didn't notice that was part of your application. Are you 
is this part of the application where you are proposing a, a new handrail um, for the front? I believe. No, we didn't. We, no, it's not part of it? No. <clears throat> what, what is it? Handrail. Well, oh, the handrail, not, yeah, not I, I apologize. No, that, we didn't have it in the scope of work. We were kind of just um, waiting to see. Yeah. I have a question on the, uh, excuse me, Christopher, you finished? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, on the front elevation there, we were talking about the, um, the cedar shakes uh, yes, sir. up there. And you stated when you took off the vinyl siding that the shakes were there. And yes, sir. what was beneath where you've got the horizontal wood now, what was the material there? What was be the band? The band, yes, sorry about that. Yes, there was a band uh, that okay. separated the uh, siding from the shake portion of the top of the Okay, house. but there was horizontal wood siding beneath it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Okay. Anything else for now? Thank you. We'll get, probably get back to you after we talk a little okay, bit. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks. Um, we'll open the evidentiary portion of the meeting. Does anyone want to step forward and give evidence? We will close the evidentiary portion of the meeting and now commission deliberation. The question is where to start, right? It's just the way the paint is around the windows and the doors. It has completely changed the character of what it looks like. Dark. Like even the, even the front door is more craftsman style now than it was. It was a nine light, I mean. But just the, the if I could outline. please remind you all while y'all are deliberating to speak into your microphone so that um, we can hear you. Thanks. Can you hear me now? I think the dark um, edging around the windows and the door really changed mm -hmm. the look of what it is. And the awnings also just completely yeah. change. Right. The visual. Yeah. yeah. The awnings are like, uh, I've never seen anything quite like that before. They're just before. site built yeah, custom, right. like 5 yeah. e metal. <clears throat> Christopher, in your work in the historic district, have you seen many examples? I mean, it's 21 years old between these photographs of, um, of that type of shake used as a architectural detail. I, you, you, they you look see more that modern to yeah, me. Th they I look like a, a modern shake. There's a, no, there's a house on uh, Fifth that has shake like this, uh, not too far from Castle and Fifth, but I mean, I, I, I can't say with absolute certainty where other places you'd see this, but it, it does, does speak to a historic element to me a, a bit. Yeah, I thought they looked new. House across the street. You have to speak right now. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I apologize. Sorry. There's actually a house literally across the street that has the same exact shakes. Okay. It's on Grace on the left. On Grace? Side. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. I, um, I just have to say I, I, the story you tell about what you found and what unfolded as you went about trying to renovate this house, we hear all the time uh, in terms of the condition that the applicant inherits the house and starts the work. Um, it's very unfortunate that you didn't have the guidance of staff to guide you through this. Um, and, and the end result is that it, it really looks quite different than it did originally, even, even with the siding down. I think it, I have to agree with Stephen, it does look more like a craftsman with those metal eaves and even how you've tied the porch roof into the existing, um, uh, it, um, I, I, I'm sympathetic to the condition of the house that you describe. But, you know, our intent is to bring these houses back as close as we possibly can, guiding you through that so that there's some original flavor left to the house. But we don't really know what it was like in, from before 1999 um, as far as when they put the siding on. Can you all hear? Beside, when they put the siding on there, like, you know, you couldn't see the, the cedar shakes, et cetera. So we really don't know what it looked like, you know, before that time. 
before they put the siding on? Even the doors. I mean, the doors look all new. The, you know, as far as that gable, the shake on the gable, I'd be willing to, to give that particular item, I think, a pass for us now tonight. You know, they, they state that there's a house across the street that has the exact same shake, and it would seem reasonable that I'm sure they were built approximately the same time that they were both built with shake like that. I think there are some other items here that you wonder about what, what was going on <clears throat> before, but I, I think that one, Ashley, on the, on the gable, I, I, I could see that being um, an original gable uh, feature. Roof modification also drastically changes the appearance. It does. And, and takes it from an historic into something completely different. Something contemporary. Yeah. And that, well, and, and then again, the door and even the front light is more What's maritime it, it, it's to it's me a, than... And it's now a shed roof and not a hip. <clears throat> it was a hip originally, and now it's just a, a shed roof that goes and ties, ties into the, uh, the upper hip roof. And the removal of the shutters. I mean, that really is drastic change. Yeah, this is probably one of the most egregious uh, renovations I think we've seen as a HPC. But um, what disturbs me the most are, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things, but number one, the modification in the, uh, uh, the roof there on the front of the building and how they tried to tie it into the hip roof above. Uh, and um, yeah, the shakes, you know, if you feel like that might be an original feature, but that is just absolutely terrible to me, um, the way that has been accomplished. And um, all the other changes are kind of fit within that same realm. Um, so uh, my thought is definitely the roof would have to be modified or, or taken back to the original, uh, the original hip on there, the gable. And of course, the awnings, they don't fit uh, in any type of genre. They don't appear to me um, as far as material or technique or look. Um, um, so the shutters should probably be put back up. What do you, what do you think, Christopher? I mean, you know, um, it's, I'm just amazed at how different this house looks. It's I am been. Too totally um, destroyed. I have to say too, I'm, I'm sorry that I, I thought there was some cross-reference cross when a building permit is pulled in the historic district that they reach out to the preservation side and there's bells and alarms go off. Yeah, when you, when you get the building permit, so you apply to the county and the first thing that's required basically is the is zoning to sign off if it's a if it's a standard construction you know a building permit for for structural alter, alterations or anything like that so i'm not sure how the application process happened with the county and city didn't come across this <clears throat> yeah, unless it's a kind if of I permit i'm not familiar with um, or weigh in um, the county is typically very good at catching these things and will will let us know let the applicant know um, there was a building permit pulled for interior alterations. Um, I believe November 8th is the date on that. The mechanical stuff would not, the, the, they did apply for permits for mechanical um, work and, and plumbing rough-ins and that sort of thing. That would never cross our um, review because it's internal. So um, anything that, that would have been triggered on the external, um, that, that permit I think was, was not pulled until after the, the complaint came into our office. So we didn't get that. So that was the November 8th yes, yes. permit application. Um, that, and that's the only permit that, that we see um, was that November 8th permit. So the mechanical and plumbing, we, we wouldn't have, and, and we, you know, we don't need right. to see those things. So I think that's what happened here. And um, just to clarify, you know, we're not trying to 
pin anything on this applicant or, or, or blame you know an individual. Um, we just want to make sure the house is compliant so that if it changes ownership um, in the future, which I believe is their intention to, to put it back on the market, um, that the new owner inherits a clean slate, if you will. So um, I'm keeping a, a list of all of the things that you all are talking about so that we can be sure we whatever gets approved or not tonight, we're, we're clear for the next property owner. Well, I, I agree with you, and I understand what you're saying. I, I, my comments have all been related to the fact yes, that sir. we hope this doesn't happen again. I, 100%. And, and I, I have to give a lot of credit to our partners at the county because they are typically very good at, at catching those. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't have any problem with the deck in the back and the back doors, um, the way they've done that. Uh, but I think this front is drastic, needs some drastic changes. I, I agree. Do we know and whether we shutter. list them, whether we list what the changes are and, and tick them off and and take them one at a time and decide and vote that way or how we do that? I, it'd be, I, I wish it'd, it'd be great to know the, these windows, you know, that they, they have these one over one vinyl windows now and <clears throat> to know if indeed those six over six windows that there were, were there were were wood or vinyl most recently, but if let's just say they were vinyl, six over six windows that they removed, would we have allowed for replacement of vinyl windows with new vinyl windows or would we have asked that those be wood <clears throat> when they go back in? We would have asked. I, th I think at a minimum we would have kind of asserted they should be six over six. Well, let's look at, uh, discuss the windows first. Do we want them to replace them with the wood and decide what kind of window we're doing? I'm sorry, I'd just like to offer uh, just another, I believe the reason, and I understand the roof line, I get that, um, but I think the reason why the, the home looks so different is because the vinyl was, when we removed it, it looked like a completely different home. Um, as far as the um, the shutters and everything, we just weren't at the point where we were putting them back on, but we got stopped at when we got the stop order. So that's the only reason why we're not, mm -hmm. they're not on, the, the hand rolls aren't on and such. Um, but the, um, as far as the windows, the, um, the front windows were to the right were the, the six on six vinyl windows, but then the entire house was just the panel over panel vinyl windows. So that's why we just replaced them all with the panel over panel instead over, of just doing one. two, because everything was mismatched, everything was broken, and we just wanted it to look all neat. The, the, the shutters were vinyl, wood, it's they very hard so. to see. Yes. The Fine. vinyl had been on there for so, so long were, that okay. you could literally touch it with your finger and your finger would go through. It was just breaking away. Um, but everything on there, someone had done a previous remodel and just encapsulated the entire house with vinyl, vinyl windows, vinyl um, shutters. And that's why I can understand what you're saying. I totally get it. The house does look different, but, but the house is what was underneath. I know, but I think just looking at what was done, there's nothing like that downtown. And, and I get even that though as well. even though taking the vinyl off changed the nature of the house, this Correct. looks very much different from Well, I can see how the roof line definitely makes that look like that. I do. But um, everything else was just what was underneath the vinyl. Well, the windows weren't in coated a uh, uh, Part in black like that, were they? And it didn't have awnings. Didn't have awnings. Didn't no, ma'am. No, ma'am. They didn't did have not. the black trim around the windows. The did thought it? behind the awnings over those windows was that there was such egregious water inf uh, um, infusion mm -hmm. into that room because it is just a flat facing wall facing the street with no windbreak whatsoever. So any kind of sideways rain was getting into those windows. The old windows. I mean, you just you just install them properly and do good flashing and casework, and you don't have to worry about the rain coming in in the future. Yeah. Well, no, no. I mean, I understand that as well, and that's what we did with all the other windows. Mm -hmm. But when we were taking apart that well, I didn't. Yeah. All you had to do is pull them, and they just fell out. 
there was flashing, and that's why I thought that if we took the extra step and built those awnings, that it would give it extra protection. But well, we have no problem whatsoever with taking it and taking yeah. them down and making it look the way the, exactly the way you want to. And and some of that water intrusion you're talking about that is one of the problems with older vinyl. You cannot tell that water is intruding, so you know it's not surprising when it came off you saw the damage. Correct. Um, I can't think of an instance where someone would come to the commissions and we would say no, don't remove the vinyl and expose the original wood. So points for that yeah <laughs> I think because it traps right. water if it's not installed right and it's just it's right well, and typically awful <clears throat> right and that was the case and to be honest with you after we got into this home we were literally at the point where we didn't know if we should just go ahead and try to have it condemned it was literally that bad so we stuck it out and tried to do the right thing and yes we made the mistake with putting the awnings on but it was only to protect the integrity of the home that you know, we were trying to save. Well, you made more than just that one mistake. You made several mistakes as far as all of this. So, no, I, um, I do agree, sir. I mean, you removed the chimney and, and well, a lot of things. So That's not so, necessarily true. Yeah. Uh, okay. The, the, the chimney was literally listing over, okay. bricks were missing on top, it was... No, I, I think the point of that is when we do, uh, when, when there are a lot of chimneys downtown that have to get removed, but we always have an engineering report as to the safety of the chimney, but, and, and that, there's and always an approval. that's why I agree with you, that was our mistake. I do agree with you on that. So, so the, you've taken the chimney down, I'm curious, is it, is it just below the floor system on the first floor, I would assume, right? Yes. You didn't take it down to the, the crawl space floor. No, so underneath the, okay, so underneath the crawl space, there was someone, one or two people living underneath there. And um, they had taken out all brick. The only thing that we found was there, there is like a, a small ring of brick around the original foundation of it that still exists. But it wasn't up to floor, le subfloor level. It was just, someone had just chipped away ev at everything. There was no pipes. There was no. There was nothing in there. But when you bought it in July, I'm sorry, you're saying the chimney was through the roof in July, right? Correct. It was, but it was only parts of it, and it was listing off to the side of the building. Like it, it had nothing. I believe like the only thing that was they had cut the flue out, and there was a portion of it still up that was caught in the rafters. Literally, I think the only thing that saved it from falling over into the neighbor's house. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we could um, kind of take it, discuss the windows, the awnings, and kind of approve as we go through. And, okay, and I'm sorry. I just wanted to, I just wanted to make clear. I, it just occurred to me that I would understand why it looks so different. And and yes, like the mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Wilson pointed out, I, we made several mistakes, and I totally agree with that. In no way whatsoever we're trying to circumvent the authority of, you know, you guys. But um, when we took that vinyl off, it was a completely different house. Well, I understand, sir, but I, I've lived in the district for 40 years, and normally when vinyl comes off and uh -huh. you see the original, it's like a breath of fresh air. We it's agree. not. It's <laughs> not shocking. It's delightful because yeah. you, you, you literally have peeled back and seen what the vernacular was, was what exactly the elements were. Thought. And uh, so we understand, I, d I don't think there's anyone up here that would say the house changed because the vinyl siding came off. Sure. It's what you've done since then. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's address each item Thank so you. we can move forward. Um, so if we start with the windows, do we want to have a wood replacement, and how do we want, what design do we want for that? Well, I'd, I'd like to just comment, too. I think that the porch windows, that porch was enclosed later, and conceivably that's when the six over one, because the original facade of the house to the left looks like two over one or two over two in, in all of the images, um, which... I think it's more in keeping, but those porch windows had to have come later when it was enclosed. Yeah. 
So what do we want to do, re recommend about the windows? I see what you're, I'm sorry, I see what you're saying, Michael. And the, there's a, a picture on page 10 that shows, it looks like a two over two window there on the main part of the house. And then those, what, what may have been a porch at one point that was enclosed was added. And I see, a, yeah, it's a six over one there. But we don't even have evidence to know, like, clearly from photographs, what was there originally. Was it a two over one, a two over two, a one over one? Probably not a one over one, but. <clears throat> Ivy, would we know when this house was constructed what would most likely would have been the window design? If I had to propose something, I'd say probably a two over two or one over one. Most likely a two over two would have been most appropriate. Yeah, I think it is too bad. Too. I think it, I think that it makes it more compatible. Okay, well, I, I, I would like to see wood windows two over two. Yes, I agree. <clears throat> I agree with that. That photograph on page ten is a two over two, actually. Like the main house was two over two, and <clears throat> yeah, they have to be wood. And two over two seems like it's appropriate for the house. So we'll include it that way in the resolution that we finally come up with. Uh, the awning to be removed. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. With we'll that. include that in the, when we do the resolution, we'll include that item for the windows as wood two over two. And that would include the porch window? Yeah, yes. all the windows. And then we'll remove the awnings? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, what about the trim around the windows? I, should, I, I, I think that is one of the things that really makes this house look different. Instead yeah, of white trim, they have the dark blue trim. That's very modern to me. It's not appropriate. And then we remove that, have a white trim, and then shutters back up? Um, I, I, would, I, I, I don't know that the shutters would have been original. If you look at that, I, I don't know. I, I'm uh, well, iffy on the shutters. Personally, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just not sure about that. Well, the shutters could match. Shutters. Shutters could match the um, top. Um, shake shakes, shakes and bring that out because you know they probably had shutters originally wouldn't you think uh, just a quick clarification on the shutters they were only on the front facade and the first window on either side I was able to determine that from the photographs and the Google Street View and they did not extend to around to the rest of the house as far as we can tell likely when this was constructed would there have been shutters Hard to say. Yeah, it's, it's a, an additional design feature. A lot of historic homes would have shutters just because of the event in a storm. They would mm -hmm. have been operable, had shutter dogs to help hold them back from extreme weather, but then you could close them. So I think it was a personal preference in many instances, especially on these um, earlier homes. Okay, so we'll do shutters. The vinyl shutters painted the same color as the shakes up above, is that what we're saying? Yeah, I think it would bring it out because you don't want it to just sit out there. And, okay. But get rid of that, black, trim. that black stuff around right, the Right, get rid of the black trim. The same on the front door, correct? With the trim, we're talking not just around the windows, also the corner boards would be white. Yeah, and the door too, front and the door. door. Okay. And what about the roof? Ooh. <laughs> roof should be modified back to match the, the original house, like in all the other photographs. I mean, it's been... Uh, they, they've changed the, the the entire look of the front of the house. The fascia board from the you know hip roof above is no longer there to show the break. Uh, they've taken away the gable in uh, there, so it doesn't look like that would be a hard fix either. But I, I kind of second that. I think it should go back to original I do too. hip. Um, the back, the deck, everybody's okay with the deck the way it is? Yeah, good. Back, the back doors. With that. Anything else we're missing? Well, I, I, I'd like to see the applicant consider a different door. I mean, obviously the door that we see in 2019 is a, a vinyl new door also, but, you know, through legacy or kind of doing some search, you know, to find a good wooden door that it's appropriate for the period half light or something like that not this craftsman and, and also by the way I, I still don't that that front light fixture 
I mean, it looks like a nautical museum, not something you'd see downtown. Now, if you, somebody has a different opinion, I like to hear it. But yeah, I don't like the. Th I don't know what should be there, but I think what's there is inappropriate. Hey, Ivy, can a light fixture be by, by administrative bypass? Uh, yes, that could so, be done. So we could ask that they get that okay. a different design approved for the back and the front, or just the front one. I think isn't the back just the uh, old bowl style? I believe. The barn light over the Our door. Barn kind of. That's not really too. Yeah, that, I'm okay with that from the back. Just the front one. We'll have it. Um, them come to something for an administrative bypass on that. <clears throat> and I'm okay with the French doors in the back because we've allowed other French doors in the backs. Yeah, and the deck's this fine is, too. Not a first time for that. I, yeah, I have any problem. Anything there. else? The chimneys. Well, there's not much we can do about that, can we? <laughs> well, no, but I think it needs to be addressed by the commission. Okay. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And I think there's a condition in the staff report for a rebuild, so that needs to be addressed. Of the chimney? Oh. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So are we going to have a, a rebuild the chimney? Uh, condition number seven. <clears throat> Keep, oh, that's fine. keep in mind that the commission has had, uh, I believe, on Chestnut Street, a couple faux chimneys built there uh, to, you know, replace ones that were torn down. Doesn't have to be real. Doesn't have to be all the way through the house to the to footing, but still, it would be a chimney. Do we want to have the requirement of a chimney back on? I have, I walk by there, and you really don't, it's, it's so, the sidewalk is so close, you know, when you're walking by, you really don't see the chimney. Um, I'm personally okay with removing the chimney and not replacing it since yeah. we have approved that in other homes when the chimney's defective and haven't required a replacement. So to me, we just what we did tonight. I mean, if it was a beautiful chimney and prominent with the house and you could see it, I would say, I hate could to see it, it could go. Could the chimney be seen from the alleyway between the two houses? Uh, I don't know. Um, yes. To the left, it seemed like you could see the... Well, across the street, yeah. you could see it. I mean, you okay, know, so it was so. visible. Uh, or, okay. But I could... Chimney cap is really nice up there, how they've done that. I hate to see that go away. I mean, it's gone, but. Uh... But we, we don't require reconstruction of chimneys when they've been defective. We allow for removal, right? So if we, to, to require this be reconstructed is almost like a penalty. So I, I mean, I don't know your opinion. I'm okay without the chimney being reconstructed. Could be too. I, I think you've done both in the past and it depends, mm -hmm. like the, the um, property on Chestnut. <clears throat> I think that discussion centered around how visible and those prominent. chimneys were and prominent and how much it added to the character of the right. of the actual building, um, if I recall. So y the commission has gone both ways on that. Okay. I don't think on this house it makes that much difference. Yeah, I, I think this one is not as prominent and it's not as important to me as fixing the other features on the front of the house. Yeah, especially the roof. Mm-hmm. Um, what about the stay of demolition for removal of the accessory building? Are we okay with waiving the stay? I'm okay with that. Yes. <clears throat> and the ramp as well? And the ramp as well. And the ramp. And there's a fence. And there's a fence. <laughs> I think that was removed. And the fence. And then we'll put the railings back on. Ooh. The railings weren't on originally. Oh, well, in 1999. But probably code would. That's what I was thinking. Isn't you that a code it? issue? Or is if the if the new buyer of this thing needed an FHA loan, the FHA loan officer would come out, or the appraiser would come out and insist that they had some kind of railings, even if they weren't there originally. But I don't think that's something we can actually. We don't see them in '99, so I think, as far as I'm concerned, as a commissioner here on this board, I don't. I don't 
I don't think we can mandate that, but I, I think if you know certain lenders want to see that there before they'll approve a loan for, for a purchase. Were you intending to put the railings back on? Due to the shallow depth of the steps from the door, we thought that it was unnecessary. And when you walked out, the only remaining one was on the left and it was shaking and it was actually tearing up the original concrete cap of the, the original front porch. So we'll do whatever you tell us to I'm, do. I'm, I'm okay with that. Well, I think the building code, if you have four risers, I think you have to have a handrail, but you might want to check that. Yeah, if it were uh, new construction. You know. <clears throat> yeah, if it were yeah, okay. new right. construction, if you were building that, it'd have to have, yeah. it'd have, to have a handrail. Um, I, I think you probably had the house sprayed. Was it sprayed, the siding? Because uh, when I was standing in front of it, it looked like they didn't protect the foundation. I mean, the, the sprayer actually is. Yes. Uh, well, are, there was some overspray to, that got on. You're talking about. Right, right. Yes. I just, uh -huh. I don't know if, um, and again, a planning scheme, but, you know, the foundation is just so stark um, together with this paint stain that spilled over from the siding. Well, yeah, Whether we, we, we determined you, that the um, that base was like a, uh, I guess it was the closest color that we could find to the color of the stucco base was uh, Battleship Gray. And um, we intended to paint. repaint the entire bottom afterwards. So I apologize about the overspray. Um, well, no, I just wondered how you were going to address it. I mean, oh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, after, we're going to we're going to make sure it looks nice and neat. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I also think that uh, trim, we talked about the trim around the windows and the door, but also the corner of the house. You see the corners are black, whereas in the yeah, prior house it was white. Or I think that should be white as well. Can I ask what the determination was on the railing as well? Can you confirm that for us? I don't think we're going to require it. Let them come to you if they want to put that yeah. in. Okay. And I think that's appropriate. That's that would yeah. be a minor modification. Yeah. So if building bypass. code or a lender does we'll require it, they could work with um, the historic planner to ensure that it's an appropriate okay. um, railing that goes up. And so the we'll, landscaping was also altered. Um, there was some landscaping removed. So, so we'll one. have that again with bypass the landscaping, the light fixture, the railings, and probably the paint too. Just to I mean, it seems appropriate that it's normally an administrative bypass. Paint. to do paint colors and stuff. I think staff could could shepherd as, that through. As long as the trim is not that dark color. It goes right. back to a white, yeah. all that trim. We're, we're okay with repainting whatever color you require, but just for clarification, it's a navy. It's okay, not, navy. It, oh, yeah, it's okay. a navy, not Thanks. black. Looks, just looks black on it. So all the navy uh, trim around the windows, the door, and the rims of the sides of the house will no longer be the navy. There'll be a white or whatever color gets approved I'd by the administrative back. bypass. Do uh, we try someone to start a motion and we'll all try to help? <laughs> what was the situation with the front door? Will that be replaced or? Well, that's, that is condition number six. I thought maybe it'd just be easy to go by these conditions, okay. one, through, yeah, one so. through seven or eight and check off and that'd be help clear some of this up before a motion's made, I would think. Well, we, we talked about the windows. Um, yeah, so condition one was the metal window awnings, and we're right, talking about removing off. those entirely. We talked about two. We talked about three, four. Specify two over two. Mm -hmm. Five we proved. Six, uh, we, uh, we talked about the front door. Seven, we talked about the chimney. And then eight, we, we talked about the landscape on eight, so I think that's it. Well, that's that's um, and then all the trim. That's Ron's question is about about the front door replace the condition is replacement of the front door with an existing sit like six light right. front door shall be approved. What about the shed roof in the front? That's not on this condition list. No, the, the roof isn't on here. We added that. Right, the roof and then the trim, right. all the trim. Be okay if I reviewed what I think you said <laughs> for my benefit. Um, and, and, and we're going to, we agreed to the removal of the, um, we agreed to prove the deck and the back door and the removal of the fence and the 
uh, ramp. The Removal right. and reinstallation of the fence, correct? Okay. Um, windows should be wood, uh, two over two, right. and their current size of the new, the new window size. Remove the awnings. Window door and building trim should be white or some color approved by administrative bypass. Um, restore the shutters to mat in a color to match the shake in the gable. Uh, roof, sh roof line should be restored to match the roof line in the 1999 photograph, right. uh, but replacing the roof material is okay. Yes. Um, the deck and the rear in its current size and configuration should be approved. The light fixture on the front should be removed and replaced subject to approval by administrative bypass. The light fixture in the rear is okay. The French doors, um, the widening of that window and uh, replacement with doors is uh, to be approved. Um, handrails and landscaping to be approved by administrative bypass. Uh, the installation of the new HVAC unit, removal of the ramp, removal of the storm door, um, <coughs> fence installation, demolition of the accessory building all to be approved. And then the question <coughs> remains on the, the style of the front door. Did I capture that correctly? Yes. Okay. Yes. Exactly. And job. the chimney does not have to be put back. Right. Thank you for allowing me to do that. <laughs> so when we do the motion, we'll just refer to what you said. <laughs> yes, what, what she said. <laughs> Any more comment on the front door? That's the last thing item that's open. You, I'm sorry, you replaced the front door? That's a new one? The front door is new? There was a um, metal door that was on the uh, oh, the original one we took over. As you could see in a 2019 photo, it had just the three little small glass features up top. So we replaced it with a, a metal door as well. We have absolutely no problem with replacing it with a wood door. But um, I, with your permission, there's something else that I'd like to say. Um, we will do whatever, as I've mentioned about four times now, to make this right with you folks. But um, as far as replacing the windows, we're, we're happy to do it. But just so that you know, with COVID and the shipping oh, yeah. issues that we're having, um, I've actually found the windows that you were talking about, and they are at least eight to nine months out. Um, it would just destroy us if we have to sit on this house for eight to nine months waiting on these new windows. We're willing to sign off on anything saying that we'll come back and do them and we'll put the order in. It's no problem, but I just feel like that's where this is going. And just in holdings alone, we would just absolutely lose everything. And we, all we tried to do was really just make this home a beautiful home again. I mean, but how would that work? How could you flip this house and get your money and move on and say, so what we'll we would be do, back later for the windows guys? Absolutely. So what we would do is we would sign an agreement with the buyers saying that when these windows come in, that we will replace the windows with the ones that were uh, approved by you. It would be put in escrow. Correct. I'm sorry, what manufacturer was that? If I'm just curious. It's on the submittal. For wood windows? It's ply gem per ply gem. application. Wood windows are eight to nine months? Pardon, it's, the, the, it's at least eight to nine months. Now, uh, it, I don't even know if it's longer now. This is, I checked two weeks ago, but I know for a fact that's how long it will take. But that being said, going with the two over two, I don't know if it would speed it up or delay it more. But, um, I just know for a fact that they're telling me eight to nine months, I can barely get materials as it is right now, but I will sign off on anything we have to, and we will order the windows, and we will come back and put them in for the new homeowner. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening. Um. I just felt that it was absolutely necessary for me to say that. One more quick question, this yes, dawned on me. Did you put white gravel up the driveway? White, white gravel. Oh, I thought it was graveled. Okay, maybe I... No. <laughs> All right. 
no, never mind. I, I thought I saw gravel. Oh, and to be clear, we did not remove the fence. There's a small portion of it that still remains on the right corner. The rest of it was just tore down. We didn't touch it. Yeah. I, I'm glad you brought that question up, Stephen. I, it's pretty much covered with fall leaves, but there is white rock in the driveway. There's white rock in the driveway, yes. And yes. that's always been there? Uh, there, were, there was white rock there, and what we did was we just put an extra layer on top. You can actually dig down and see where it's been there for years and years. What we also found were um, some of the old uh, counterweights for old, you know, we Window found everything, weight. old bottles, you know, all kinds of stuff, but mostly hypodermic needles and <laughs> <laughs> AR-15 rounds. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I have a little bit of an issue with that recommendation from him because I hate to think that the commission, if he's here to flip the house, which he stated that that's what his intention is, that we're passing along his problem to the new owners and are we being compliant in that? I mean, I could just see this opening up a whole nother bailiwick for the new owners of this property. And if something happens to these folks, um, I'm not sure how you're bonded and licensed and all that stuff, and that's not what I'm asking right now, but I, ha I would hate to be in that situation myself to purchase this house and then depend on you to come back in nine or ten months and it may be longer it may be less and um, I'm just not comfortable with that myself I mean the other commissioners may be comfortable with that but um, the fact that you may be having material issues that doesn't to me have an issue with this house um, I think it should be restored back as the Commission has recommended and staff has recommended and um, you know, we're all dealing with these material shortages and it doesn't, I mean, it's not part of our purview to worry about what your financial consideration is for this house. Our job is to make sure that we protect the heritage of the preservation property here in town, so within the district. And um, I would just have a hard time myself putting that attachment to this with some sort of um, future owner then would have to go back and deal with, with all of this. And I don't think that would be fair to the future owner, uh, whoever that might be personally. But um, uh, Is it yeah. possible yeah. that it, um, I'm going to ask a question of Ashley, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, if during a sales transaction they set up escrow, for the windows that are on order mm -hmm. and have to come in, mm -hmm. would they then include the cost of the installation of that window? Yes, yes. Everything okay, would so be that if included. the builder never shows up again, it doesn't matter to the homeowner, they'd still get the correct windows in there. It would be that set amount of money yeah. set aside. And when those windows came in, they would be installed, it would be put into escrow, what the, you know, and, and okay. that they were ordered. Um, if um, a, a realtor has an obligation that it becomes a material fact in listing the property and um, so uh, yeah okay okay so there's there's a, a meeting ground that we could reach Certainly. here yes. okay are there any other uh, wood comp wood window companies that would be quicker? Do you know of any? I think Marvin and Pella are de delivering like four months right now yeah. for wood. So, so what? So, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, is Sierra it possible Pacific? that we do change company to something that's quick, to short, shorter period we of time? Actually, did that's actually not necessarily true. We have to order these all special size for to fit the actual framing. You are correct in that they have a turnaround time of around four months for stock items, but these are not stock items. And I've heard, I, we've gone everywhere, looking everywhere for someone to help us. Two of the three people that actually did them are no longer in business. Um, and the one company that we did find, unfortunately, they are out of Texas. So not only do, is it 
you know, a pain to get it done, but then you don't have to go through shipping and God forbid they bro arrive broken. <laughs> then we're just, you know, five, six, seven months out again. May, may I address something? Um, I just wanted to point out that um, we've had flippers and, and other house renovation firms come before the commission. And this gentleman may be the first one who's been honest enough to say that he doesn't know that he's going to get all of the renovations per your orders done before he actually sells the house to another buyer. Um, I think that's a pretty common risk that folks take um, when they're buying these houses. And, and this sounds to me like a preservation agreement situation that we could possibly okay. enter into that would, on top of the escrow um, that we were talking about, the preservation agreement would be filed with a register of deeds. Um, so it would give additional notice to any potential buyers that there's still this outstanding issue that has to be taken care of. Um, and so that's a possible solution um, for this situation. But but if you Can think you about it, when we've had folks. Yeah, that would be great because when, when the lawyer goes to research the deed, mm -hmm. it would be, it would show on the up on the deed. Right, exactly. Well, for that to be effective, though, you would have to go ahead and order the windows. Absolutely. It's, it's not an after the fact thing, right? You well, would have to show the bill of laden that you've ordered the materials and it's $40,000 or 20, whatever the cost right, is. Right, so. right. Well, and, and, and we will, but um, as she mentioned before, in es when we come up with that price, we can actually fit that into the, the cost of the right, home okay. because I cannot guarantee that that is exactly what's going to happen. No, and I'm sorry. It, it, the purchase, yes, of course, but the delivery time is what I'm. And you're only going to get a buyer that's going to take these complications. I mean, that's just the way the market is. Correct. So. Yeah. And thank you. And just just to be clear, the issue is the dimensions of the custom windows, not the fact that it's two over two. It could be one over one. It could be fifty over twenty. It doesn't matter. It's the, it's the size. It's the size. Okay. Yes, sir. And that's to stay within the original framing of the window. Okay, thank you. But from thank what you. I've, but from my suppliers that I've talked to, that it, even if you're getting standard, it takes a long time. I know. I yeah. know. I've yeah. almost had four heart attacks of, mm -hmm. you know, I, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. I figured out, you know, that this was yeah. an issue. Because, yeah, it's a, it's a toughie. Yeah, and there, I mean, there's really no such thing in building materials, there, there's no such thing as like a standard window. You know, there may be Correct. some, you know, toll brothers and they build their neighborhoods, they have, a whole bunch in stock somewhere, but typically whenever you order a wood window that's a replacement or otherwise, they're, they're putting them in line to get manufactured, fabricated, built in the factory. They don't like keep warehouses that big where they can just store all these stock windows. Totally understand, <clears throat> yeah. And the problem is, is it's not like I have the ability to actually, you know, fur this window out and reframe it because then I'm tearing up the original windows. Mm -mm. So I have to get them specifically for that size. Correct. Now, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. You said that the awning was protecting rain coming in. Correct. So the windows that you have here, if those awnings come off before new windows are in, does that mean rain's going to go in there? <laughs> no, they're, they're still flashed. But th I see this all the time, especially at the beach. Matter of fact, I was at a home today in Curry Beach. And the windows are properly flashed, but they are on a dead drop on the side of the building, just the way these windows are. So what happens is water gets behind the siding, it gets behind the flashing, it comes in because there's nothing to, there's no break from it, and it's constant running water. So that's why I think the previous owners had such an issue with that room. Uh, the floor was completely buckled and rotted away around the windows. And that was our thought in putting those awnings on. Clearly not a good one, but we will take them off. No, no my only question was whether we need to wait for the new windows before you take the awnings off. Oh, well, I would taking... strongly suggest that. Yeah. Uh, no and, Tyvek, no sheathing. There's no Tyvek, no sheathing, nothing in there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean. Not in those years. Okay. Yeah. I, yes, ma'am. I would strongly suggest leaving them at least until the new windows show up. And then and put them in properly. Correct. So then when the windows come in, we show back up. We put the windows in. We take the awning down. And it's done. I do have one quick question, though. Um, I know you're saying that you want to change the uh, color of the trim. 
um, it, I guess we have to go through a bypass to get an approved color other than white, is that correct? That would be up to staff on a bypass. Okay, okay, I just wanted to be clear. All right, yeah. thank you. Any, oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Does anyone want to try a motion? And we'll all help. <laughs> Christine will help us too. <laughs> Where are we here? Um, yeah. <laughs> Can't find it here. You got it? <laughs> here it is. Okay. I move to approve with conditions the after the fact request for work on windows, roof, rear deck, siding, awnings, light fence, paint, landscaping, handicap ramp, storm windows, handrails, shutters, chimney, and to waive the 365 day stay of demolition and demolition of all accessory building at 710 Gray Street and to adopt the proposed findings of fact. Details are shown on the drawings, plans, photographs, submittals, and the narrative statements contained in the application of submittal materials. Statements made at the meeting are, a pack, are a part of the request unless otherwise noted. The motion is based upon evidence presented before us, the application submittals, testimony, staff reports, including the findings of facts. The following conditions shall be applied to ensure compliance with the design standards, what Christine said. We got all, everybody understands what's, I mean, it's like one through 12 now, I well, believe. not really. I believe you're oh, striking. 13, I'm sorry, I missed one. Uh, one through 13, you. okay. Striking uh, seven? And, striking oh, and we're striking six and seven. seven. <laughs> six and seven. Well, we have to say. But to replace well, number six to uh, replace the think, front door. I think you should go through each number because they're not all approved. Number one, for example, we're, we're not replacing it with canvas awnings. We're saying we're removing it completely okay at the time when the new windows are put in um, and then we're going to say all new windows will be two over two wood windows subject to installation a, a preservation agreement preservation agreement and okay. we can make the awning removal a part of that same preservation right. agreement yes. since it's going to stay make sure it's all done mm -hmm. yes okay. I draft that so I'll make sure that's okay, okay. thank done. you okay everybody understand Three is fine okay are we uh, the proposed request with conditions does comply with the Wilmington Design Standards for the Historic wait, District. Wait, wait, not, we, didn't, we have to go through all of them. Yeah, because we can't refer to what Christine says. <laughs> I was joking. Yeah, so... so we'll we'll be here to midnight. Oh, okay. So, um... Well, what? so three is okay. Okay, that's a good thought. Christine, you want to reread that into the minutes? Um, your motion to approve includes um, approval of wood windows, two over two, um, in the current size, uh, removing awnings um, and when the windows are changed out, subject to a preservation agreement, uh, changing the color of the window trim, door trim, and house trim, uh, restoring the shutters to be a color that matches the shake and the gable, um, approving the new roof materials, but restoring the uh, roof line to match the 1999 photograph. Um, approval of the rear deck and its size and configuration. Um, the light fixture on the front door, sh uh, near the front door, should be removed and subject to approval by administrative bypass for the replacement light. The rear light fixture should be approved. The French doors um, and the widening of the window opening on the rear should be approved. Um, the handrails landscaping um, should be approved subject to administrative bypass. The chimney um, removal shall be approved and it does not need to be restored. Um, the f removal and reinstallation of the fence shall be approved. Removal of the storm door shall be approved. Removal of the ramp shall be approved. Removal of the HVAC, or installation of the HVAC unit shall be approved. Um, demolition, waiver of the stay of demolition and demolition of the accessory building shall be approved. And the front door that exists shall be approved. 
Did you have the shutters on that list? Yes, oh, yeah, restoring okay. the sh uh, shutters and okay. uh, in a color that matches the okay. right. shake in the gable. I think that's it. Anybody? Anything else? And we're approving the front door. I have a question about the front door. She said front door, <coughs> excuse me, front door as it exists is approved, but I've heard many of you all mention the front door. Yeah. Change not liking the existing front door. So let, that's I, true. If yeah. someone could clarify what's supposed to happen with the front door. That the front door would be replaced through administrative bypass. With a wood door? Is wood that door? correct? I think, I think wood? Yeah. I think it could be added. What, either a, what, a, a, a nine or a, a, a full light? I mean, half light or what? what is there a particular door or we're just going to let? They said existing six light front door. Oh, she so said we're a six down. light. She has replaced and the there former been front so many door of them with, um, with the existing uh, I, six front door. I don't know. I'm thinking that should we could do that through administrative yeah. bypass to find something that's compatible once they get everything back together. I agree. Is that allowed for staff to do that without the commission, the design of the door? If you approve it as a condition, we can, okay. we can do that. Yes, all sir. Right. Okay. Let's, all let's right. do that. Let's do that. Okay. Anything else? Going once, going twice. Okay. The proposed request with conditions <laughs> does comply with the Wilmington design standards for the historic district and landmarks, is compatible with materials, features, design, context, and character of the historic buildings in the historic district in which it is located and is congruous with the site streetscape and historic aspects of the historic residential district as a whole, applicable design standards 1.6, Secretary of the Interior standards, standards 2 and 9, 2.3, fences and walls, standards 2 to 5 and 9, 2.5, garages, carriage houses, accessory buildings, standard 1, 2.6, decks and swimming pools, standards 1 through 6, 2.8, lighting, standards 2, 4, 5 and 8, 3.1, roof, standards 2, 4, 6, 3.2, windows and doors, standards 1, 4 through 6, 10 through 13. 3.3, 3, masonry stone, standards 4 and 6. 3.5, exterior walls and decorative woodwork, standards 1, 2, 6. 6.2, 6 demolition, standards 1 through 4, 6 and 7. Second, anyone? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, uh, now we'll go back to the minutes from the November 18th meeting. Comments, anyone? Edits? I'd like to, on the back, the last page, I think, um, I think um, that the Reeds would like to provide education to realtors. I think it was and the general public um, on what uh, the legislation could accomplish. I know we did talk about the realtors and the need to educate them, but I think um, the, the, the public as well as well as commissioners, but uh, I think there was the education went beyond just the realty community, and um, that last paragraph is what I'd like to talk about. Um, I know there was there was much discussion that went on for a while, and it's hard to condense it and get it into the meetings. Um, I do remember actually opening by reading um, the, the segment from the 160D-942 uh, powers of the preservation, meaning to undertake an inventory of properties of historical, prehistorical, and architectural and cultural significance. And the whole discussion was built around that. Um, my, my concern with it, it, what is assembled here is that it, it sounds like we're just asking for a budget request which ultimately is the back side of that. But as Christine pointed out, that is not our scope. It, it, our duties are laid out to make the request. It is up to staff and city council and city manager to approve that budget item and it go, going in. Um, is there any, anybody have any thoughts? Uh, actually, I, before I open it up for some discussion, I always thought that we were going to come back with a resolution from staff. You know, when we approved it, we talked about many, um, many ways in which to word it. Um, 
and I reached out to Ivy after, within the week after our meeting, and, and um, she was going to wait for the minutes to be typed up and pull from that what we had discussed. <clears throat> um, you know, a few weeks went by, and uh, I understand, and Christine can speak to this, that um, she didn't feel that there was need for resolution, that our vote and our discussion was enough, and um, I appreciate that input, but I, I'm um, uh, somewhat uncomfortable with that myself in terms of uh, sort of making this request to staff, to city council, so that they know it, our wishes. Um, and um, anyway, that's what, whether, we, what, obviously there's, there is no resolution that in uh, stated that it, that came back and said, "Is everybody in agreement with this? That we could could have been issued to us, and is everybody okay with the wording of that?" And we vote to do that. Um, and somehow this, the, the minutes from our discussion seem ultimately to the end of the goal, but it just seems weak to me. Uh, watered down, not clearly us pulling from our scope of duties by state statute and, and clearly stating that we would like an inventory undertaken. And though that's stated in there, I, I think that it's, um, it just seems watered down to me. I'd like to hear what other people thought. And, and was it everyone else's thought that we were gonna come back with specific wording when we took that vote? That staff was gonna prepare a vote, I mean a statement that we would sign off on. And that doesn't, that hasn't happened. Is, Michael, is everybody talking, happy with the wording of that? I mean, that what, what went forward. I mean, that's. I'm just asking. Yeah. When I you just, said when you said the last paragraph of this, well, uh, that you, starts with Mr. Smith. The, the, the last two paragraphs. The last page. I'm sorry. The last page of the, the two sentences. Our just the, the 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 very last two sentences. Is that what you're referring to? Well, I mean, early on it talks about the funding too. Mr. Smith said that the subcommittee had reviewed. Um, that's kind of brief. There was discussion, and that, and and actually, our um, motion came up as a result because there was discussion at that subcommittee about a survey um, within the historic. That's accurate. He recommended that funding be requested for the inventory. I, I think it was understood that that would be part of it. If, and I may have discussed funding. It was really, and, and my opening comment was, I actually read verbatim from the powers of the Historic District Commission about undertaking an inventory, and that's not in the minutes. Um, but also, um, I, I took, Christine's point, and I never, and I don't think this body was, it, it's not up to, and Mr. Wilson made the comment, you know, we make the request, it's not, it's not up to us to worry about the funding, you know. Um, so um, these are just some points that, that I have questions about, and again, I always thought that staff were going to come up, was going to come up with a a resolution, a statement that we all could agree upon because our comments did kind of ramble and uh, we were very clear we wanted an inventory. Um, and and um, I wasn't aware that we were going to get us anything done by, by staff. I remember Chris sort of summarizing what we were agreeing to and then we all said yes and that was all we did. So I, I, I was not aware that staff was going to do anything. In fact, I thought that was, it was over when he said that. Okay. Well, I, go ahead. No, well, finish I, the conversation. I, I, sorry, I'm, go ahead. I didn't know you were at the mic. 
No, I've, I was I attended your last meeting, yeah. and what I remember is similar to what uh, Ms. Kesson just stated. You expressed your what you would like to see, and, and then, then Chris, you kind of summarized that there was a little bit of discussion. I did not walk away believing that the commission asked for a resolution. What I did, and I know Christine explained the budget process last time, and I will explain it a little bit more. As we prepare a document, when we make a request, we have to provide justification. Like, why are we making this request for right. this for this um, additional monies that, that, right. that carries right. forward? What we will do is we will go into a lot of detail of what the money would be used for. We also will use the information that the, the support from the commission. We put it. We write details. We we will include the minutes. If you're comfortable with the minutes, we would include those minutes with, as an attachment to that. Um, in our budget submittal. Our budget submittal will be due on January 31st. Uh, they just kicked it off on Monday kind of with the with the guidelines and the directions and here's what your you know expectations are, those kind of things. Um, it's a, we, our budget submittal for our department is typically pretty um, detailed. We outline the request, here's the justification, here's why we are requesting this enhancement and this will be considered an enhancement. Um, and we provide any attached documentation in this case, we would reference what we believe was summarized at that meeting as well as a copy of the minutes to help justify that request. Um, if that helps a little well, bit understand. Well, it, it does, it, it, it does. I, um, I apologize if I had uh, the wrong interpretation when I actually spoke to Ivy. She was not shocked that I was asking sure. for those. So I think there may have been others, including Ivy. I won't speak for her, but um, I, I did not hear her come back to me and say. Um, and, and you know, in some ways, the the language is um, a little bit. I remember when Dawn was here, and as COVID unfolded, I was trying to rally some support from the commission to as a voice of support for sure. Dawn's budget request for an inventory. <laughs> um, and, and because of COVID, it all fell apart. And, and really, somehow, in some ways, it seems like what is printed out here is that we're just supporting your initiative to, um, for the funding, for the budget funding, rather than just calling out the powers that we have as a commission to say we would like to have an inventory. Uh, carried out and I would commission. certainly like that uh, in, in the audio to uh, have that um, included in, in, in the statement um, so what I hear you say is and, and I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it says in the minutes but what I hear you say is that uh, make it clear your request would be more clear as a request from the Commission that it be in the budget right that we, that we, and we can make that, we can make a request. We, we are committed to make that request in our department budget uh, with whatever supporting materials we need to provide. Um, understand it is a competitive process. Christine went through that last month, uh, explained a little bit of that process. Ultimately, we, we can submit it. It's not our decision to make it happen. It is a vetting oh, wow. process along many, many competing factors across the city. It's not just our department budget, but they've oh, every department. Um, and ultimately it's council's process, but we can make it clear in our submittal that it is a request, uh, initiative requested by the commission, if that, is the, if that is the pleasure of the commission. I don't want to put words in your mm -hmm. mouth. Uh, you're speaking for yourself, but ultimately we got to do what the request of the commission is. I want to, so, yeah, so, no, so we can get that not, clarified. I, no, that is what we talked about, a request for a survey. And um, there, I don't think that that's, yeah a question but you know again if we need to go around again and 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 say it i was just i had some concern about the wording sure and and, and the commission needs to get comfortable with the wording on the minutes um and uh, and what happens between now and january 31st are, com are, are city council <laughs> notified that that the commission has this has made this request uh we have I'm not sure exactly what they get for our, uh, ultimately when the budget, we, we submit our information to the, to our budget office and then there's a vetting process. Um, 
Because I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make sure I understand the, the question as well as make sure I can answer it adequately. Um, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know. I don't know how they how they're notified. Well, the reason I bring it up is that at that subcommittee, which you were a participant sure, in, um, two two of the members uh, were supportive of that, and for them to be unaware that as a commission, we have voted to um, request an inventory. We really are on the same page now, and I I know there won't be any movement, but that they would not know about that until they had budget hearings. Uh, that's what I'm just no, trying to understand. Understand, understand. And and, um, and also, I'm just and 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 this has nothing to do. I was going to ask Christine, and maybe she would be the one. She in the minutes it does reflect the cost, but I would wonder. Leading up to this, there are there are state funds that um, from SHPO that will contribute for an inventory, and the, these are actually. And when will that when will that request be made? I'll let her answer that question. I believe you're referencing the CLG grant program. Um, the grants usually um, become available in January or February with an April application deadline. For 2021, there was a total of $100,000 to be shared among all CLGs in the state. The SHPO asks that grant applications um, not exceed $20,000. So most grants are more in the $1,000 to $5,000 range. Um, so that is, it is an option um, to apply for those grants, but the cost of administering a grant would exceed $5,000. You know, it wouldn't be worth that amount of money. So unfortunately, that's not a, a really great option for us. Um, due to the cost of this okay. project. Um, we, I, I keep my eyes open all the time for grants that, that are, you know, suitable for this. Um, I just sent a grant um, posting to, to um, Travis Gilbert, you know, so I'm watching out for these things. Okay. And if something does become available, we will certainly try to take advantage of well, it. Well, my thought was just that it be timely, and you would know that. And secondly, mm -hmm. if we could soften the cities um the cost of this survey to Absolutely. the city if there's state money that could contribute to that that's that's what mm -hmm. my direction of uh, asking that question and if i may just add something real quickly because christine hit at it a little bit when we apply for grants we have to make sure that by the time all the administrative costs associated with those grants, we got to make sure it's worthwhile for the city, um, not just for our department, but also to kind of think the downline or the, the every department that may involve finance, legal, et cetera. So we have to do, we had to do our vetting process as a city to make sure that ultimately that grant is worth the, uh, the squeeze, if you will. Okay. If that makes sense. It, it and, does. And, it and, does. And we are, and we're constantly. I, I really don't know the workings. I know there is money. Right. I bring it up only again, hoping that if there was some state money that could soften Absolutely. the city's um, cost in this survey, mm -hmm. um, would be uh, considered. Right. That, and, that was my point. And, and I assure you, the staff would like to see this inventory done as well. So we are looking for monies and any help we can do. With it's been in previous budgets and so forth. So. Excellent. And we will put it in this budget. I, I believe nowhere is in 160 in the statute is there any requirement for an inventory to be done by any commission across the state that's not in there? I'm not. I'm sure. in, in the state statute, uh -huh. 160A, there's nothing in there that says an historic district or a commission has to have an inventory. That's not in the statute. She's nodding no. And that's correct. There's no requirement. No, that's what I'm um, it's, it's allowed as one of the um, powers and duties. That it's something okay. you could do. Um, but, of course, that any inventory is going or survey is going to be hinged upon a budget request. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That's right. But I do think that there, I have read in some language that the recommendation is every seven or eight years. And again, it's not bonding, but we are well out from that. Right, but it's not required. Okay. 
So I'll, just for the, some of that wording, I can maybe get with Amy of, of, and the audio and ha have some of the language added to, um, <coughs> to the minutes. So we will delay the approval of the November minutes until next month? Until you work with Amy? Okay. okay. Anything else? <laughs> thank you, Michael. Michael, thank you for all that. Thank you. Are we on items from staff? Mm -hmm. Am I speaking out of turn? Um, I, I know you all know that um, very sadly we are losing Ivy. Um, it's a huge loss for our preservation program. She has brought so much um, expertise to the table and um, I, I'm very sad to see her go. Um, we are pleased to tell you that we have filled our associate planner position. So we will have a new face joining us um, January 3rd. Her name is Megan Basic. She's coming to us from California. Um, fingers crossed she'll be here on January 3rd. Um, we will, but we will have a vacancy. So for the benefit of anyone listening at home, um, I will be the point of contact um, for better or for worse. You're stuck with me. Um, so I will be with you um, during the, the vacancy period. So. Um, we wish Ivy well and um, have enjoyed our time with her. So, and I there was some, oh the LVC became effective um, December first, so we are operating under new rules. Also, for the benefit of anyone listening at home, um, all major works applications now require a pre-application meeting. That does put a little bit more work into it on the front end, but hopefully that means that by the time someone submits, the applications are complete. You're getting complete applications with all the materials that you need. Um, we, we kind of hear you asking for the same things over and over again, so that's an opportunity to try and catch those things early on and, and get uh, more complete packages to you. So um, those, are, those are our updates. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I have an item. Um, quick, quick question. Um, the last applicant that was here did a lot of things incorrectly. Um, I mean, from top to bottom. Yes, so sir. is there any type of, um, I don't want to use the word fine, but that's not the right word I'm looking for. But, but are, are, I mean, what happens to a person like that? And we've had several, you know, as we mentioned earlier, folks come before the commission with, you know, seeking forgiveness so yes. what is, how does the staff approach that when you have a well there is an after the fact application fee of a hundred dollars okay. in addition to the 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 base application fee so there is that um i, I suppose that's a bit of a penalty okay. if there are um violations there's a fine associated with the code violation um but typically if you submit your application, you can stay the, the enforcement of that um, violation. So we, we really, um, and Ron and I have talked about this um, recently, um, we need to do a better job with educating property owners, educating buyers, um, working with our real estate community um, to just let people know they're in the historic district so we can try to prevent some of these things. Um, we do have a plan to send out a, a, a postcard to property owners, just a you're in the district, call us if you need any help, um, kind of, you know, friendly information. Right. Um, so we, we do need to do a better job, and, and, yeah. and hopefully we can catch some of these things in advance. But there's not really a, a penalty, so to speak, um, for that beyond the application fee. We're requiring them to make changes. That's a double cost. Right. Oh, They've I know. already yeah, done it once, and now they have to redo it. it. So Th this guy got a whammy, and, right. and I, mean, I mean, if he would have been advised differently, he wouldn't. He would not have had to go through all this, you know, with re window replacement and. But we can't question their motives when they come in here. But I just don't feel like it's upon the commission to make it easy for them to do this, especially when they come Certainly. in and they've violated every rule within the within the standards. Yet we're we're just saying, well, that's okay, you know. Um, and it is a difficult okay. spot. Yeah. Um, the, the house, uh, there was a lady here this evening on um, Ann Street, 507 Ann Street, who wanted to remove the chimney. Um, that was a similar situation where a property owner did a lot of things without permits. Um, what we don't like to see happen even more is that a new buyer comes in and is unexpectedly responsible for, for something that someone else did. So, you know, we weren't, like I said, we weren't trying to throw 
that applicant under the bus, um, but we wanted to make sure that there was a clear path forward for a new property owner, that they weren't inheriting a lot of, of problems and issues. So if we can clear that up um, and, and, and make it um, easier for the next person to, to do the right thing and, and start fresh and not start with a bunch of violations, we feel like that's right. the right thing to do. All right, okay, thank you. Melissa? Yes, um, I, some of you may have noticed that um, Commissioner Kaiser entered into the room earlier this morning, or earlier this, uh, at the beginning of this meeting. As Christine just mentioned, the LDC went into effect on December the 1st. The City Council uh, um, Appointments Committee met in November, and if you'll recall, over the summer, uh, when Commissioner Romero's term came up, he was not reappointed, um, and we, we were already transitioning to, re to take our membership down from nine members to seven members. Um, Appointments Committee met in November. Ms. Kaiser's term was the next one to come up. Her term was going to expire in March or April of 2022. So at that time, the decision was made that since she was the next to roll off of the commission in order to bring us into compliance with the LDC, she would be, um, it would be requested that she, you know, come off the commission early. Um, unfortunately, there was a mix up and she was not notified until today, so I made sure to um, speak with her when she came in this morning or this afternoon and rest assured that we will bring her back. We will ask her to come back, have a presentation that is, um, gives due respect to, to everything that she's given to the commission and to the community because she has been on this commission since I started um, almost six years ago. Uh, so I just, in case any of you all noticed that she had come in and were wondering what was happening there, I wanted to, to address that and, and just assure you that I profusely apologize. And I, asked, I told her she could stay if she was just, you know, curious on <laughs> what was going to happen today. Uh, but but she, she went ahead and, and left. But I just wanted to address that with you all. Thank you. I, I have a general question. Um, I believe the reasoning for reduction to seven from nine was the lack of applicants and how is that going <laughs> are we going to have five next year i mean is, where are we going with this no one of the issues is that by statute we're required to have not only a certain number of of commissioners but also commissioners with special uh education special um, knowledge about the historic district Understood. and that's one of the things we're having trouble um, getting and one of I think one of our bigger issues right now is getting someone that's a business owner um, to apply for the for the Commission so we're working pretty hard on that but w this was the largest uh, board or Commission we had in the city and again because we require you all to have specialized knowledge we were having trouble meeting that requirement well, it makes you feel better. Technically, I own a corporation. You know, just, just saying. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah, okay. I'll keep that in mind in case anyone no comes problem. checking our compliance. Okay. <laughs> New LDC, we have seven members, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And it went into effect last okay. week. Right. Okay. Um, like I said, and, and you okay. know, it's, it's, this is not anyone's fault that this it's mistake just... happened. We only change our membership, I guess, every 20 or 30 or so years. So <laughs> there was a little hiccup, and, and I, like I said, I did not mean any disrespect to Commissioner Kaiser and or or to you all. Anything else, anyone? Sorry, I know you guys are probably ready to leave. Um, my name is Ron Satterfield. I'm interim planning director. I know you've probably seen me here the last three or four meetings. Um, I am offering I'm, I'm out meeting folks i'm trying to establish relationships with different stakeholders and interest groups and so forth i've had six or eight meetings since um probably first of, in, towards the end of october i'm reaching out if there's any one of you who would like to meet with me one-on-one -on -one and just talk and just you know establish a relationship or rapport i just wanted to offer that to the planet to each one of the commission members if, if that's something you're interested in just let me know thanks yeah, thank you thanks thank you <clears throat> So everybody have a great Christmas and Happy New Year, and I guess we'll see everybody next year. I uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> I second it. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> just a reminder, we'll be um, voting on uh, officers in um, January at the January meeting. Right.
explains that. 